Hey, 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 it's Evelyn here of the Evelyn Inc. And I'm back with another video. If you are new here, girl, welcome to the channel. Okay, if you've been here for a long time, girl, welcome back. And so I kind of, I'm enjoying kind of doing these less formal videos, these more chatty, chatty videos, even though I still have notes. That's just me, y'all, because which I don't know, which I probably can guess, is I film a lot of videos at one time. And so literally, if I don't write my thoughts down, even if I know I just kind of want to do a Chatty Cathy video, I if I don't write my thoughts down, I will forget things and then be like, ah, I should have said whatever. So um, I had this idea some time ago. This is this thought. And I just, so today I just want to talk, right? There's no like step one step two step three i just have my notes but i just i had this thought about some time ago really we're gonna do the sirens while i'm filming that's fine uh, <laughs> i had this thought to myself about was i living my life collected or was i living my life curated and you know if you kind of look at the definition of collected and curated you kind of think it's they're similar or there's not that big of a difference. It's kind of like when we were talking about um, self-care and self-maintenance, right? But this idea of things being collected versus things being curated. And um, the best example I can give to like illustrate the, the question that I was asking myself, it's kind of like when you get your first set of furniture, maybe you were in college or maybe it was right after college or maybe it was right after high school and you know you might have got some hand-me-down furniture you know somebody else was buying um some new furniture and their furniture was still in really good condition and you needed furniture and so they gave you furniture and so you know or maybe somebody was moving out of their dorm or maybe someone was graduating and you got another piece and so you collected it right you didn't curate it you didn't go out and hand select um what you wanted and what best served you for the phase of life that you were in and so i thought about that right because i definitely had you know collected furniture when i was in college right the furniture that used to be in my basement when i was growing up this black leather furniture if i have a picture of it i will insert it if i can find it um and first of all i don't even like leather furniture so that lets you know right there but right i was in college i had my own apartment and i needed furniture and so I had collected furniture right and the bedroom set that I had in college was my bedroom set that I had growing up that um you know probably from the time I was in seventh grade right sixth or seventh grade and so it was collected and I got to a point in my life where I was wondering if the things in my life that I was experiencing um had I collected them or had I curated them? And so I jotted down some notes, right? Which is, um, one of the things was, okay, so to curate is to select and to collect is just to gather. Like you just, you know, is it, I mean, y'all get what I'm saying. You know, when people say a curated collection or, you know, um, you know, you curated this experience and, I'm just going to be honest, I realized in a lot of my areas, a lot of areas in my life, even though I talk about being strategic with your life and all this kind of stuff, I think the way that I got there was I looked at different certain areas in my life that I wasn't the happiest with. I wasn't, I won't say that I was miserable with them either. I just, I just, they just were kind of meh. You know, they were there. Some of them I weren't, some of them I was significantly not happy with, but I don't want to paint this a really dramatic picture that I was just in this horrible place. I wasn't in this horrible place. It was just like, it was meh. You know what I'm saying? It was blah. It was a You know, like, I, I don't know. I, like, I have no other way to express that. And so I was like, you know, Evelyn, are you... I don't know why the words collected and curated came to me. And so I was like, let's look at that. And so I looked up the definition. Because y'all know, I nerd out a little bit, right? So that's the whole, you know, select and together. And I realized there was a lot of things that I was not selecting. Um, you know, I wasn't selecting my influences. I was selecting some, right? Like, you know, what church I go to, all that kind of stuff. But like, um, when I really started like going through, like, let's just say, for instance, my music, um, there were some things that I was experiencing in my actual life 
that were a reflection of the music that I was listening to. And I'm not even saying that all of this music was like bad or raunch or vulgar, but there there was a direct correlation between what I was listening to um, and what I was watching and it was showing up in my life. And I was like, mm, could, could it be, could it be that there's some relation here, right? Could it be that because I'm consuming this all the time, that's what I'm getting out? Because I do believe whatever you take in is what you're going to get out. If you take in trash, you're going to expel trash. If you take in drama, even for entertainment, you're going to um, experience drama. If you take in, you know, sadness and depression and murder for entertainment and all this kind of stuff, it's going to come out somewhere in some kind of way. And while I wasn't necessarily consuming those things, and I, this is not to pass judgment, so I don't, that's not, if y'all know me, that's not what this is. It's more so about, I wasn't happy with certain areas of my life, and there was a direct connection between what I was watching, what I was listening to, and things that I was experiencing. And I was like, did I collect this experience, or did I curate this experience? Because if I was to select this experience, I wouldn't have chosen this. I would have chosen something different. And so I realized that I had collected my influences, and I had not chose them. And I think, you know, in life, for me, the game changed specifically when I started curating my influences. And I did that years ago. And here's a couple of things that I did. I really got clear about what I wanted in life in multiple areas. And I really had to take the time to map out what I really wanted. Not what I thought I should want. Not what other people thought somebody like me would want. I really had to get clear on what I wanted in all of those areas and what that could look like and then I wanted I went about finding influences that matched that picture right so whether it was the kind of you know like church family I wanted um and years ago and I switched church families and listen I was going to an amazing I was going to an amazing church for nine years and I wanted more of a family feel I wanted to you know, have a, a real church family in that sense and not just go to church and so I came across my current church which um is all about you know we talk about nobody walks alone and being in life group and being in community and being in family and so it directly lined up with what I said I wanted. I don't know if I would have recognized that church and that it was available to me had I not gotten clear about what I want. Um, you know, I and so I cleaned up what I was watching. I cleaned up what I was listening to to match what I said I want. This is this is why I say there's no judgment here, and it's not one size fits all because you have to be honest about what you want. If you want a hot girl summer and you want that life then listen to hot girl music this is really simple right um if you uh, like it, it's just really really simple if you want um you know a closer relationship with god and you know a hot girl summer music ain't gonna cut it okay get you some gospel right and, it, and i'm not saying that those things directly make you get the end results but they definitely influence the direction that you're going and i think um, it would be foolish of me to think that they had no influence. And I think, you know, people say, oh, it's just for fun or, oh, it's just for entertainment. The brain doesn't know the difference. It's consuming that all day long. That's where your thoughts come from. That's where your beliefs come from. So you have to decide what you want, um, or at least I did, and then pick the influences to match that. And you guys know I gave up TV years ago, soon to be, soon to be, seven years ago and one of the best things that I ever did and um you know just because I was watching some things again things that weren't necessarily bad that that's not the life that I wanted you know there were there's one really popular show um that's out I don't think it's out right now but it's out I mean it is wildly popular but the things that are happening on that show I don't want in my life so therefore I don't watch it because it will manifest somewhere it's kind of like this is this is a really <laughs> this is a really bad example but it's a really good example like you know how you when you eat corn you can chew it up you can pulverize it and 
your body can do its best mechanical and chemical digestion on corn and then when corn is ready to exit it comes out the way it came in what you put in is going to come out if you eat corn corn is going to come out so for me it was like if if i'm have a steady diet of, of this type of content whatever it is right then that's what i'm going to get for example i remember probably be about five years now i was like i really want to uh, maybe six years now maybe a little bit before that okay maybe six or seven years ago i was like i really want to really master this online space i really want to master business i really want to learn as much as i can and i literally started reading everything understood under the sun i was taking every webinar that i could get my hands on i was listening to everybody's live stream i was taking classes taking courses taking coaching i mean i was doing all the things because i wanted that influence i wanted to know um how to grow my business online i wanted to understand that at a deeper level so i chose the influences that could get me there right and not that i 100 percent agreed with every single thing but in general um i submerged myself in the online business culture and so now i make money online because i specifically and strategically chose that influence um and so I changed that. Another way I changed, I, I curated my influences is I used my Instagram um, and uh, as a a living, breathing vision board. So I basically went to my vision board after I had you know decided everything that I wanted. And I do an updated vision board every year, but some things are consistent. And I went to my vision board and I said, so in all of these areas of my life, right? Um, I want to go find accounts that reflect where I want to be not where I am but where I want to be so for example um, I really wanted to work on my style and my fashion and th this is more recent because I kind of I used to like I used to be dressed like in college and then I don't know what happened and so now I'm trying to get back to who I used to be um, so I started following stylists I started following um, women who I liked their fashion sense so not just anybody right because i was like who are people where i like their fashions and i remember when i first went natural and i knew that i wanted to enjoy my natural hair i wanted to be proud of it i wanted to style it i wanted to do these different things i started following people who enjoyed the natural hair journey they enjoyed healthy living they enjoyed all of that and i still follow some of those people to this day i follow certain accounts on instagram and social media that um are indicative of the kind of business that I want. I follow some that are indicative to the lifestyle I want. I follow some that um, really um, underscore my faith, right? I under I follow accounts that are where I want to be relationally. I follow some that are where I want to be physically, the way you know the kind or the kind of brand that I want to be, be and you know or the kind of places I want to live or the kind of experiences that I want to have. And so I I intentionally um, started following accounts based on that so it wasn't just oh i saw this i'm a follow it was like does if is is watching their content and consuming their content on a day-to-day -day basis going to get me closer to where i want to be from an influence standpoint and i can tell you it is insane and i also can tell you if if any of those accounts started posting things that weren't in the direction that i wanted to go in so not necessarily that they're bad or you know and it just that the, those the things they started sharing may not have been in the direction that I wanted to go in. I unfollowed, not because it's personal, not because I was angry, not because I was offended, not because they're bad accounts. None of that. It's just that the re direction that they started taking was not in line with where I wanted to go. And so since it's my Instagram feed, I was like, I can curate and view whatever I see. And so what's beautiful about that is when I log on, I see what i'm aspiring towards all the time and it's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful thing so i definitely have been curating my influences for the past several years and it also has shown me that not curating them is 
the work that I've had to do and continue to do to undo some influences that I had for a really, really long time. So, I, you know, I told you this was going to be a chatty video. So anyway, I just feel like when I do these chatty videos, I feel like I give you like we can connect like we're having a conversation like I love the tips videos and I know that people find those really useful and I like doing those too but I want to do some of these too like where we're just talking about a thought or idea and it's not you know five ways to this and ten ways to that I think that's helpful I think I, let me know do you guys get value of, out of it and do you have a preference do you like these more chatty videos they kind of feel like a podcast maybe or do you prefer the like listicles is what I like to call them like list articles or list vlogs vlog anyway do you like the list videos I was trying to put list and vlogs together and I was like that's gonna give me logs anyway uh, so and I think another thing is I started selecting my experiences so I think I was just I don't want to say living life on pause but I was living life on pause and they say that a lot of single people do that and I think that we really do I think that we don't even know that we're doing it when we're doing it and it's not till we're not doing it that we realize how bad we were doing it um and I started selecting my experiences and that's I think that's why I kicked off the year with the best life challenge and what's crazy about that is I'm so sorry that I have not been updating on the challenge and I'm probably I'm not even gonna lie I'm probably not because I've been so busy living it out, right? I remember going, you know, I want to do two to three social things a week. You know, I just want to go new places and try new things. And I've been doing that and it has been amazing. And some experiences were meh and some were fantastic. But the goal is, is to really experience different things. If I like it, great. If I don't like it, that's fine. And, you know, I'll do something else next time. And, um, being intentional about those experiences and curating them versus just whatever comes up whatever comes my way whatever happens to me in life that stuff is going to happen but i was i've been curating experiences i've been intentional about spending time with myself spending time with my friends spending time with my family going to things that pique my interest intentionally seeking them out ooh, seeking them out scheduling them putting them on the calendar um I've really been intentional about that and so it's interesting because my life is feeling much more curated and high quality because of that. It's kind of like this year one of the things I wanted to do is I really wanted to pare down my makeup. Um, just I didn't have a ton by some people's standards and by some people's standards I did but I had a lot of collected makeup samples here and there from different things, stuff that I bought that didn't work, you know brands that I wanted to try and it didn't work. And I realized, I was like, I want to pare down. I kind of know what my signature look for the most part is and how often I want to vary. I kind of know what products work for me. I know which ones I want to try. And I really wanted to pare down, um, increase the quality, um, and create a little bit more of a, a curated luxury experience when it came to my makeup. And so I'm in the process of doing it now. And like, listen, I love drugstore brands. I also realized though, but because I don't wear makeup every day, I want it to be a luxury experience. And so I want to transition out of some drugstore brands for some more higher end brands. But, but that's because that's the experience that I want, right? And so I want to curate that collection, right? I want to have just like, two to three foundations, two concealers, you know, maybe probably about five eyeshadow palettes to be honest, just because I want some variety. But I, like, I just want a nice little collection and that's it, you know. I don't want 45 lipsticks. I, I don't, it, that means I got to be wearing a different lipstick every week. I'm wearing a couple of different shades of red, pink, and nude right so i just i just really wanted a curated collection and not because i'm necessarily trying to be a minimalist but i do understand the allure of that mindset um because i definitely want to pare things down you know i've been looking at some of my decor and going does this really fit me anymore and wanting to change some of that out and wanting to be a lot more curated even than those things and so one of the things i've had to do is 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 fight the urge to gather Oh, this is on sale. Oh, this is a good deal. Oh, this would work. And so the model that I've been using is if it's not a heck yes, it's a heck no. So when it comes to buying clothes, when it comes to buying makeup, when it comes to 
purchasing anything if it's not a heck yes it's a heck no when it comes to um things do they fit my lifestyle if it's not a heck yes it's a heck no doesn't mean they're bad doesn't mean they're not good doesn't mean they're not valuable doesn't mean they're not quality it's just that i want a curated experience I mean, and because we don't control everything that happens to us or around us i was like i really want to curate the things that are around me so um that's it um, yeah, I, I curate, I really had to think about what I wanted to experience, what the influences that I wanted, how I wanted to feel in life and curate an environment, um, that would assist me in that goal and not necessarily creating it, but would assist me in my goals in those multiple areas. So I know this video is random. Uh, I hope you found it beneficial. I hope you're following me on Instagram at the Evelyn Inc. And yeah, y'all, I'll see you in my next video. Peace.